We are like different branches that came from the same tree. Though we have dispersed far and wide, we all share the same origins. I got to San Francisco in 2011 to pursue my master's degree and one day I was walking by the Museum of the African Diaspora. I was really curious. I walked into the museum and I, I made inquiries and that's when I realized that I was a part of the diaspora. I want my work to speak of where I am and what I'm going through as, a, as an African who's a part of the contemporary diaspora. I come from a culture that people have never experienced. I have the privilege of knowing my origins. Dinknesh is the oldest skeleton ever in the world, and that's where we all came from, in a place called Ethiopia. So as we began to develop language, communication, and we started to disperse to other parts of the world, that's when other races came about, because we started changing because of climate and other factors. So I have a painting here that I titled Evolution. I also titled it Changing Faces. I try to use portraits to help people experience Africa because that's where we all are from. I adorned him with Adrinka West African symbols and each of these symbols is very symbolic to his role as a warrior. Try to imagine like what would he have been if he was in Africa and I could see a Zulu warrior here so that's why I painted him as a Zulu warrior. This is actually Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> so she's, she's an iconic, very successful, strong female of African descent. I made her an African queen. She is from a tribe called Mercy, which is one of the most ancient tribes in Africa. It's from Ethiopia. There, they have a lot of variety with the way they dress and garnish themselves and I felt like this culture is so rich I wanted to imagine what Oprah would have been if she was still in Africa. We all know that Obama's father is from Kenya so I wanted to imagine him in his own original culture. I made him a Maasai warrior in this piece. I adorned him with the Adrinka symbol for bravery and strength. Normally, the Maasai warriors wear a red cloth over themselves. Red is extremely symbolic. In this case, I put the American flag on him because of his role as the US president. The next diaspora is the transatlantic slave trade. It happened around the 18th century when Africans were kidnapped and taken from the motherland to other parts of the world. So this piece is extremely conceptual. Most of all of this was done from my imagination and my own way of just showing the migration story. Even though we are part of a new society, we still find ways to show our original culture. It could be by hair, dressing, adornments, or even the way we speak. So the contemporary diaspora shows the modern African in society today. I have a painting here titled Kiafro. Kia has this beautiful bouncy hair, like curls everywhere. And so sometimes she would flat iron her hair and wear it straight and people would compliment her and be like, oh Kia, your hair is so lovely today. I actually prefer her hair when it's, it's curly and it, in its original state. I can actually use art to teach people about their origins. And that's, that's the importance of the, the diaspora and the importance of places like the Museum of the African Diaspora because you go there to find out more about your roots. So this man told me that he had traced his ancestry and he was from a place called Mende in Seri alone. He asked me to paint his grandmother in an African village and he gave me a black and white picture which was extremely washed out. So I did this painting and I put her in a village that had huts and grass 
and made it look extremely local. And when he saw this painting, he was amazed. Art is a tool of expression and it's art is a language. And so for me to be from Africa, I can actually bring the African experience to people who have never had it just by using my paintings. As an African woman who's a part of the contemporary diaspora, I have something different to offer society. I am unique and my work is unique because my origins are unique.